and to take in economics for SS1. What are the topics to look at in SS1? The first topic we have to look at is meaning and concept of economics. The second topic will be looking at the basic economic problems. What are the basic problems that face all economy regardless of their level of development? The third topic, we have to look at the tools, basic tools for economic analysis. We have some tools that we can use to analyze the economic problems that face all economy. We will look at them. And the next one, we will be looking at the production. When we are talking of production, what are we talking about? How does it affect the economy? We will look at it. The fifth uh, topic that we have to look at is business organization. When we are talking of business organization, what are we talking about? How does it affect the, com uh, the economy? We will see it one by one. And the sixth topic we have to look at is population. When we are talking of population, how does it affect the, 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 the economy? We will see that. And the next one is, which is the seventh topic, we will be looking at the labor market. When we are talking of labor market, how does it differ from the ordinary market we are familiar with? We will look at it. We will see it. And the next topic, which is the eighth topic, we'll be looking at the distribution trade. When we are talking about distribution trade, what are we talking about? We we'll see it, we stay under it. And the last topic we have to look at in SS1 is money. Money, we are all familiar with money. When we are talking about money in economics, what does it mean? How does it affect us? How does it affect the economy? We'll look at them. Those are the list of economics uh, topics that we have to look at in SS1. Then, let's go to the first topic, which is meaning of economics. The term economics comes from the ancient Greek word that says okos, which means house. And there are another word there is nomos, which talks about custom or law. Then, it's the combination of these two Greek words that forms the word economics that we are used to today. And the, 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 the two words come together give us the meaning of rule of the house or house for good management. That is the meaning of economics. In the ancient time, the word economics used to be referred to as political economy, which is the way they call it then. But later in the 19th century, the economist suggests that the word economic, economics should be removed from other I mean, other social sciences and political science and should stand on its own. And in that case, they separated the uh, economics from the political science and other social science subjects. Now, what are the definitions that have been given to the economics? The first one that we are to look at here is given by an economist, Adam Smith, which says, economics is an inquiry into the nature and causes of wealth of nations. That is the definition given to the economist by Adam Smith. The second economist that gave the definition to it is J.B.C., which says the, study, the economist is the study of the law which governs wealth, the go which governs wealth, the wealth of a nation. That is the definition given by J.B.C. And the next uh, uh, so, uh, uh, econo uh, economist definition given by another economist was the, the, the is, I mean, J.S. Mill. That is the name of the, uh, the third economist that tried to define what we are talking about economics. He said it is the practical science of the production and distribution of wealth. Those are the first three that try to define economics. And the last one that tried to define economics is Professor Lord Robbins. He tried to define economics. He said the economics is the science which study human behavior as relationship between ends and scarce means, which are alternative uses. This is own uh, uh, this is own definition of economics is generally acceptable because it is all embracing. It covers so many uh, major aspects of economics, such as scarcity, wants, human behavior, and choice. When we are talking about uh, ends, in this in its definition, the ends from that definition is referring to the human wants, desires, or needs. What individual, you and I, everybody needs what we want. If everybody should list, the, the, I mean, the, what all of us 
everybody needs wants for a particular period of time. What are those things? I want to buy this. I want to buy that. I want to achieve this. Those are the ends. The next one that is uh, another uh, important uh, concept that is mentioned in that definition is scarce. It talks about scarce. The scarce is referring to the scarcity. What, are the, what is it referring to? The scarcity of our uh, uh, resources to achieve all that we want. Those things that we want, that we need, that we desire to achieve, we need to get it with the use of one resources or the other. But those resources are scarce. That is the scarcity in that definition. Another one is means. The means is talking about that specific resources to satisfy human wants. And the other thing, concept there is alternative use, which says that those resources that we are to use to satisfy one needs, desire, or the other, they can be used for another thing. So those are the three, I mean, the, this concept that makes that definition of Professor Robbins to be generally accepted and is still functioning up to today. Now let's go to the branches of economics. Economics has been divided into different branches. We will look at it one by one. The first branches, the front branch that we have to look at here talks about microeconomy and macroeconomics. When we are talking of microeconomics, we are talking of the behavior of individual or a unit in the economy. We are talking about the behavior of basic elements in an economy. It's not about everybody now, but an individual that needs to take one decision or the other. Individual, you and I that needs one thing that we want to achieve, that we want to buy, that we want to acquire, or the other. How do we relate with this? And what are the things that we need? Our interaction and relationship with each other to achieve this. That is when we are talking about microeconomy. The individual elements in this, the basic elements in this microeconomy we are talking about, it can be household, a family, it can be an individual, it can be a firm, a firm in, in the sense of the, 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 the uh, business, and the buyer and the sellers. Then the macroeconomy talks about talks about the the the, 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 the entire economy. That is the aggregate production, the aggregate consumption, the aggregate saving and investment of an economy, of a country, of the entire country. That means the combination of all the individual units and all the individual firms and uh, organizations. How do, we, how do they relate with the economy? How do they relate with the markets? What are the decisions and how do they uh, really take one decision or the other? That is the, the macroeconomy. And also, macroeconomy try to find solution to the, uh, 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 the, uh, the, the, the basic economic problems that we'll discuss later. Some of those basic economic problems that face every almost every nation can be an unemployment. Unemployment exists everywhere. It can be the inflation. Inflation happens in any country regardless of their level of development. It can be the economic growth. It can be the public policy and the rest. So this macroeconomy try to answer the problems of an economy, and that is the micro and macro. My, my, macro is dealing with the entire population, entire country. And the next branch of economics is that of uh, positive economics and normative economics. When we are talking of positive economics, Positive economy is concerned with what actually happened, what is happening, or what will happen. Here, the problems are identified, and the prediction on how to solve those problems are made. That is positive economy. For example, someone can say there will be a rise in general price level, which is inflation. Whenever the supply of money outstrips the supply of goods and services in an economy, in some situation, the person has tried to identify a problem and has tried to give a kind of prediction of what will happen. That whenever there is a, 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 the higher, in, I mean, there is increase in the supply of money in an economy, then the supply of goods and services definitely, all things being equal, inflation will happen. Or in another way, we can say a substantial fall in demand for the product of a labor-intensive industry 
will cause unemployment in that economy. What are we talking about here is that when there is a fall in the demand for the products of an industry that use labor intensive to produce, not capital intensive in this way, but use labor intensive, that is, they use more human efforts to produce their products. And when there is fall in demand for their products, in that case, the industry will have no option than to uh, lay off some workers in order to meet up with their own profit, in order to make more profit. In that case, the, there will be an unemployment in such an economy because so many workers have been laid off. In that case, that is a kind of identifying the problem and make a kind of prediction of what will happen as a result of the problem. That is what we are talking about, positive economics. When you identify a problem and you try to give a kind of prediction of what will happen at the end of the day. The second part of it is that of normative economics. Normative economics deal with what ought to be or what ought to happen, the ideal thing that's supposed to happen, what should happen. That is normative. 